Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for what is the Anim Notify class. We're gonna play a quick example here. Here's my character. When he jumps, it says jump start notify, and when he lands, it says jump landed notify. And you can see me doing that a couple times. And those are using Anim Notifies. So let's take a look at them. First things first, there are two different ways of doing Anim Notifies. They all go inside of your animations. So if we look at our animations here, you'll notice every animation has a notify track. If we were to right click on it, you can see we have notifies. We have Anim Notifies or Skeleton Notifies, Notify States, Sync Markers, and the ability to manage them. This video is going to cover the Anim Notifies or Skeleton Notifies. They're basically the same thing, just two different names. Now there are two ways of creating them. You can create a full Anim Notify that you can reuse, and we're going to look at that. Or you can create one inside of the Blueprint itself, and we're going to look at that. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. Right here we can see a notify called Jump Start. If we right click, add notify, and did new notify, it's going to ask us for a name. In this case we can do Jump Start again. And it's going to create a new notify that is going to be inside of this Anim Blueprint linked up to this animation. We can't really reuse this. Once it's created, you can put it wherever you want. You'll notice it's got some settings in here. We can see, for example, the chance for it to trigger between 0 and 1, 0% 0 and 100%. Whenever it fires off, that's the chance it triggers. Maybe you want something to only happen 5% of the time, maybe a special effect. This is how you could put, change that. Whether it triggers on a dedicated server, whether it triggers on a follower if it's using a sync group. We're not using those here, but if you are, this is an option. The type of filtering, for example, default is no or change this to LOD and prevent it from triggering these notifies at certain LOD groups. Under that we have the category event. Basically, how much does this animation need to be weighted in order to trigger? By default it's going to be such a small number it's always going to trigger. But maybe you want certain animation blendings to happen and you only want this trigger only to happen if we have enough of this animation playing. You can adjust that with the weight threshold here. Then you have the montage tick type. For 99% of the times, cute is going to be fine. Well, maybe 99. Most of the time, cute is going to be fine. Basically, it puts them into the queue, and then once it evaluates everything, it triggers them off. But it can be delayed, and it may not fire exactly when you want it to. If you want it to fire exactly, you can switch it to branching point. Basically, when something happens, these notifies will fire off immediately. Those are the settings, and those are unique to both different types, but how would we use them? Well, when we're looking at them here, if we right-click, you'll notice we can change when it begins, or the frame it fires on, and we can change a couple of those settings. You can also replace it with a pre-built notify. We'll cover those when we get near the end of this. Notifies that are part of our animation are going to show up on our event graph as an anim notify event. So we have jump start again. If we go over to our blueprint, and we look in our event graph, you can actually see I have one here, our Anim Notify Jump Start, which matches up with this one here that I already created. And that's where we get our Jump Start Notify to fire off. If we want our other one that we just created, we can right click. You can see Add Anim Notify Event. And any of the Anim Notifies for this blueprint that we've created for our animations are going to show up in here. So we could do Jump Start again, and you can do whatever you want. So let's, we'll just copy paste to show it's working. And we'll do jump start notify again and probably spell it properly would be a little bit better again oops now i screwed up completely now we'll just do jump again make it easier save this and compile we'll run our example now you should see jump start notify jump again jump landed because as our animations are playing through it fires this event which fires off this event this notify fires off it fires off this event and then we have a third one. But you notice I only had two notifies in here. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to go ahead and unhook this one for now so it doesn't annoy us later. We're going to get rid of this because we don't want to use it. We can delete it or right-click delete. So I'm just going to delete it. Now we have just our jump start. 
if you have a notify but no event hooked up, well, nothing happens. The notify still fires, but it's not hooked up to any event. Where's our end coming from, though? Because if you notice, if we run this again, we're still going to get our end. Jump landed notify. Well, let's find out. It's jump landed. Let's find our anim notification. So here's our animations. Inside of our actual third person jump event, this is what triggers when we land. If we look inside of our actual blueprint, and then we went to our anim graph, and then we pulled up what happens when it's ending, it actually plays the third person jump at the end. So it's right here. So we have this one set up to the end under jump landed. Now, if you look at this one, you'll notice it's slightly different. It has a color at the top where other ones didn't, but all the ones are the same. And you can, of course, change that as needed. If we right click on it, it's going to have the same settings, but at the bottom, it has a new one called Open Notify Blueprint. If we open it, well, we get an actual blueprint self contained that we can reuse for animation notifies. Now, those are easy enough to create. If we were in there, for example, we don't want to create in here. If you create in here, it makes one that's local to the skeleton. But inside your browser, you can right click. We can find our blueprint class. Search in here for notify. And you can find your anim notify. You can also find anim notify state, but we're not covering that now. So you could anim notify, select, name it whatever you want. So in this case, you'd anim notify another one. And then we can open it up. Inside of here, well, there's nothing. There's no default event graph. What you have is two functions you can override. So under functions to overridable, we have received notify and get notify name. We also have, if we're in our default settings, the color if you want to change it. So let's look at the one we had set up. So this is our jump landed right here. You can see we have received notify event. So when the notify fires off, which is right here, it's going to fire off the receive notify event and then do whatever we want. And it passes in the mesh component, so the object that this event is on, and then the animation that was playing. So if we were to pause this, run our example, jump, wait for us to land, hit our debug, and look, you can see it's firing off of our character mesh, and the animation is our third person jump. So it's really simple. Now if we look at here, we have some variables. These aren't really variables you can mess with while you're working with it. These are variables that can be set in the designer that we can do stuff with. So I've gone ahead and I've set this to instant editable and expose on spawn. If we look at our third person jump now, you now see we have a new message up here, a new property called landed message, which matches our variable here. And I've set it to this is my landed message. And I can just take that, we'll hook it up into our print string. And now when we land, it'll say, this is our landed message. Well, this is my landed message. We've passed it in from our designer. So we can allow our designers to adjust things. Maybe you want things to fire. Maybe you want special things to happen. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. But that's what the variables are for. We can pass them in. The other overridable event is called get notify name. Now you notice in my file browser, this notify is actually called animn underscore jump landed. But if we look at it in here, it's called jump landed, jump space landed. If you override this event and return back a name, a string value, as you can see here, that is the name that's going to show up inside of your blueprint. So you can make it nice and pretty looking. That is the basics of our anim notifies. And I told you there are some other things. If we're in here, for example, here's our jump landed, add notify, you'll actually find these are the two I created but you'll find all these other ones. These are default ones created in C++ and exposed to the engine, so your designers have some default ones. You can play a sound, particle effect, you can affect the closing simulation, for example, and they're all simple to use. Like, for example, sound. Let's say you wanted to play a sound when you landed. Well, you can move it over here, for example. You'll notice when I did that, when I had two of them overlapping, we now got a new notify track. You can have multiple notify tracks to hold sync groups and other notifies. I can bring this back down here and erase it. Let's say it plays the sound. Let's say it does the sound before and then jump landed at the end, something like that. Well, there we go. Now, if we look over here under our place sound, you'll notice we have some properties exposed. We can choose the sound, the volume multiplier, and settings like that. And then when this triggers, it's going to grab all that information that was passed in and then do something appropriately 
like play the sound. So that is it. That's our anim notify. You use it during animations to notify something that you want to do something. Simple as that. Good common examples are things like starting jumps, landing jumps. Maybe you're walking. You can have your characters anim notify during a walk. Let's find our walk. Every time the foot goes down, you can add an anim notify, left foot down, right foot down, and then you can play a particle effect like dust or something like that. And then you could use your weighted settings for the chance to fire off so it doesn't always fire off dust. In that event, you could do line traces, maybe see what item you're standing on, play the appropriate sound, and have it all triggered into the animation so that way, even if the animation speeds up or slows down, your events are always timed to the animation itself.